Now, the purpose of this video is to show you how to link EQ settings and why you might want to do that in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here with an acoustic guitar. And right now, it sounds like this. And I think the guitar could be a bit brighter. So I'm gonna add an EQ to this track. Right click, go to my favorites, and choose Re-EQ, which looks like this. Now you don't have to use Re-EQ. You can use any EQ plugin you prefer, but I'm using this one because I know you have it. And I'm gonna start off on the high end, adding a high shelving EQ, which EQs from here all the way up, making it sound more subtle or more pretty. But I'm also noticing I wanna boost a bit in the upper mids, which will give us more presence and make the guitar sound more in front of the speakers. But if I bring the frequency down too low, So it's a sound too peaky. So instead, I'm gonna keep the frequency higher to make it sound prettier and bring up some mid band EQ or parametric EQ. Before and after. But the only problem with doing this with two EQs is in order to boost or cut how much we want, we need to do it with two different parameters. Adjusting each until it sounds just right. But if we link the parameters, we can do it all with one movement. So let's first delete the EQ parameters we're not using. Starting with this one, remove the band, then this one, and this one. And let's hide our tabs, as we don't need to see them anymore. We could do it all from in here. So now, we'll choose the frequency we want to be controlled. In this case, I'm gonna choose this one, although you could choose either. Then I'm gonna move it a bit up and down. This way, it's the last touched parameter. And if I go up here to the menu, we'll see last touched, is our gain for the high shelf EQ. With this chosen, we could choose parameter modulation MIDI link. Choose it, that opens up this dialog, and we'll choose link from MIDI or effects parameter. Then we'll choose this EQ and the gain for band one. As you can see, the one that's being controlled is grayed out. We'll choose this one, and notice this drop down, we could adjust it with the offset right here to put it back where it was. Now, this frequency is being controlled by this one. So if I bring this up and down, this one moves with it. I can still adjust my frequency by going left and right on either, but the gain can't be controlled from over here. It jumps right back, but we can control both of them from here. But if I bring this down to zero, this one is not at zero. So to link those up perfectly, put it back up here, we can adjust our scale down here. And it goes from 100% forward or back. But we need to go a bit higher, and luckily we could type in any value we want. So let's try 200%, which brings it up even higher, but again we could adjust the offset right here to put it back about where it was before. And now if we adjust this down here, this one goes to zero at the same place. So now we can adjust it all with one parameter. Which makes it a lot easier to A, B. Hear it off or hear it on. An add EQ proportional to each other, which also makes it easier if we put the control for this on our track panel. If we choose this one again, we can go to our menu and choose show and track controls, and it shows up in here. Let's move this over so we can see it better. Now if we adjust this from here, it adjusts both of them together. 
bring it up or down while it's playing. We can adjust it to taste even with this closed. Start from zero. And it all gets adjusted without even seeing this. But we're adjusting both of them at the same time. Now this is gonna work on any similar source. I tend to do this for acoustic guitars, snare drum, and even lead vocals. Anywhere I wanna boost the upper top end with a shelving EQ, but fill it out in the upper mid-range with a band filter or a parametric EQ as well. Now this will also work on low end. In this project, I have a kick drum. And to EQ it, I tend to start with the lower mid-range and cut it down to make the kick sound bigger. So again, we'll add an EQ, which looks like this. We could hide the tabs again and start with the lower mid-range. Hold on the shift key to adjust the bandwidth and find the frequency we want to cut. But you notice it starts to sound a bit thin. So you can boost the low end with a low shelf EQ right here. Before and after. So by cutting the lower mids and boosting the low end makes the kick sound fatter. But again, we have to do this with two steps. If we want to control them together, just choose the one we want to control. Start with this one, bring it up and down. Let's delete the bands we're not using. Again, choose this, move it up and down, go to the menu and choose parameter modulation MIDI link, which again, opens this up. We'll choose link from MIDI or effects parameter and choose the CQ and the gain for band two. Again, it adjusts it over here, which you could change with the offset to match from before. But now we're controlling it from this one. But if you notice, if I bring it up, the other one goes up. And if I bring it down, it goes down. We don't want that. We want these to move in reverse. So we can adjust our scale to be negative, just the offset to match from before. And now if I bring this up, the other one goes down. So now it's bypassed. Now we could adjust both settings at the same time. And notice the kick gets fatter as we do it. And again, we're adjusting one fader, but both parameters are being adjusted. So instead of having to turn off and on the bypass, we can just quickly bring it to zero to bypass the effect and see how much we want by bringing it down. And we could still adjust the frequency from here on each one. To get it just right. And again, if we want to put this on a track control panel, just choose this one, move it up and down, go to the menu, show in track controls. Let's move this over here and we can adjust it all right from here. Bring it up to zero to start from there and bring it down to taste. And again, if this is hidden, it's still gonna work. Open it back up and we can see what we're doing, but still adjusting it with one control. So it's a lot quicker to do this just by adjusting one parameter instead of two. So I find this more useful than having to adjust two parameters one at a time. 
We could do it all with adjusting one, and they both get affected. And this is going to work on any low frequency you want, whether it's a bass guitar, a kick drum, or a sub, or anywhere you want to adjust the low end in this way by cutting down the lower mids and boosting the low end. So that's pretty much it. That's linking EQ settings and Y in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh!